Penn State fans, Blue White Breakdown, Wednesday, May 1st. Significant, right, Johnny McGonagall? Also, I'm glad you survived not only draft weekend, but I think you know where you're go- I'm going with this, but Luke McCombs, Luke, Luke Combs weekend, right? Not Mook Combs. As you can <laughs> see, I'm a big concert fan. But anyway, I saw pictures of it, Johnny. It looked, it looked awesome. I don't know how many people were at that thing, but boy, uh, I know you had a good experience. I know Greg Pickle had a good experience, our former Penn Live Penn State uh, teammate, but that, that looked wild. Bob, it was it was incredible. Look, I mean, I I would put myself down as like a moderate country fan. Like I I wouldn't listen to it at all five years ago, but I've been slowly being converted. And um, it, it's very easy to listen to when you have a beverage in your hand as well. But I knew like a handful of songs from Luke Combs going into the week. And I decided, look, I'm going to this concert. I, I might as well spend all week listening to him. Yeah. Uh, he was incredible. Like he was great live. Like sometimes you never know with artists sometimes uh, that sometimes they're just not very good live. He was yeah. great. The atmosphere was phenomenal. I, I mean, he announced that he said there was over 80,000 people there. It was the biggest show yeah. you know, he had ever played. And I mean, there was, there was not an empty seat uh, in the house, at least, you know, seats that were sold because the, the stage was set up in the North end zone. And so, you know, all those seats behind in the North end zone were empty, but uh, mm-hmm. really from, you know, both sides, the sidelines and into the student section up top, upper bowl, everything, you know, there was uh, thousands on the floor. Uh, it was a really, really cool experience. And I, I hope that Beaver Stadium and, you know, the AD, Pat Kraft and everyone continues to do shows like that when students are on campus, because I think they would hit a, hit a snag trying to convince 80,000 people to come to State College in the middle of the summer. But uh, yeah, it was a really, really cool environment. Uh, the weather wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible either. Uh, you know, it was, I think it was 80 and sunny the next day. So, you know, couldn't have everything go our way, but man, it was a, it was a great time. Johnny, I just realized I'm so happy to learn that I butchered the name of the guy. He's like one of the most popular s- s- singers in the, in the United States worldwide. And I called him McComb. So that's, it's another feather in my <laughs> Uh, cap on that one, Luke. I apologize. I know you're listening, Luke Combs. Definitely. Johnny, I don't know. I think in this, I think the where where Penn State is. I don't even. I think they could get darn near eighty thousand for a, a big name concert, whether the students are there or not. I just think it's it's actually, even though it's in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of you know you're 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 kind of close to Pittsburgh. You're not that far from not that not that Harrisburg is is a big city, but I mean. You know, if you want to come in from New New York or New Jersey to see a really good act in the summer and t- and have a great tailgating experience, I think I think this could be as as James Franklin likes to say, an elite uh, experience for concerts. And uh, I know there's going to be some hockey games there in the future. That's the one that I'm looking forward to. I, I'm yeah. actually hoping if they do it, I want to go up and cover that because I think that would be wild. It, it could be. It couldn't. It could be 30 below and people are going to show up for that thing. But I, I just think Penn State's finally come around to the fact that, hey, let's, we, have a, we have this unique setting. We have this unique, uh, you know, around Beaver Stadium, this unique tailgating experience. Like, why would we just want to limit it to seven days or, you know, se- you know seven weekends a year when, when you know, it could, it could enhance. Penn State fans would love it. I think it would do wonders for uh, generating revenue. I think it's it's a no brainer. And if, if this is any indi- in any indication, uh, I know you're going to be going to just about every concert up there. But I, I just think I, I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about it. My one question though is, did you see any other Penn State beat writers there, or was it too mobbed? Even yeah, I mean, you were just probably swamped by people. It was too mobbed, Bob. Um, and, and yeah, so this was the. This was the second concert that they've had at Beaver Stadium. I think uh, Blake Shelton back in 2017. Uh, and, and I don't think they came close attendance-wise to what they had yeah. uh, th- this past weekend. The setup was great. Um, yeah, I, I got into Beaver Stadium uh, around 8 o'clock. The, the, they were advertising that the concert was starting at 545. But thankfully for Reddit, uh, I went on there to see, you know, previous Luke Combs shows, the recent shows. Like, when does he actually go on stage? Because, I, you know, all respect to the openers, I didn't really, didn't really care. Um, and uh, and they said that he basically goes on around eight forty five. So I, I showed up at like eight o'clock. We didn't do any tailgating outside the stadium. Uh, we uh, we concentrated our efforts on the downtown bars. 
Good. Um, and there was a couple of people in our group that you know had never been to state college before, and so that's the kind of people that you're you're attracting to these shows. Not only the students and you know season ticket holders, people who want to see Beaver Stadium in a different light, but you're getting you know people who wouldn't otherwise come to state college in town. Yeah. So, uh, you know, had to show them around. You know, go to cafe, go to the first, all all the. Old had to do it, Johnny. You had to do it. I'm sure it really it, it was painful for you to go to all those bars. Oh, it was terrible. You know, bar hopping downtown. It's it's something that I would never uh, never. Ever done before not a question yeah, whatsoever I know. uh no but it was a, it was a really good weekend I, I hope that they continue this and like you mentioned the the hockey games uh in the future i know winterization of beaver stadium with the actual logistical nightmare yeah. that, that could be uh there that that's been the big roadblock for them in the past but you know with uh you know with any luck and with these renovations and everything that, that they're doing to the stadium that they'll be able to host hockey games I got fingers crossed for like, you know, preseason, uh, like Premier League games. Yeah. We saw, I think, I believe it was Manchester United, Real Madrid uh, years ago at Michigan Stadium that sold out. Uh, they've had them on college campus. I know Liverpool is playing down at South Carolina Stadium during the preseason this upcoming summer. So uh, if they're able to nab one of those in the near future, uh, maybe I'll cover it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do what I did. Don't cover it, Johnny. You don't want, you want to be on the other end of that. Yeah, no, it, it was a really good time, though. Looking forward to more of those in the future. Johnny, before I let you go, because I know you're a, <clears throat> you're, you're a, a huge music fan. You, you know all yeah. kinds of music. You, you're the only person I know that knows the words to every song, like, in the last 35 years. It doesn't matter what the genre is. If I, I, it, I'll just – they'll play it. They'll play just the start of it before, you know – before a Penn State football game while they're warming up and I'll, I'll just look at you and then you start singing the words verbatim. So I know you appreciate your music. What would it be like in mid-June if, you know, hypothetically Bruce Springsteen or Taylor Swift played at Beaver Stadium and would your head explode? So here's the thing, Bob. Uh, f- first of all, on the on the press box end of it, when I'm singing songs and everything pregame and yeah. I'm not like I'm not like belting them out. Like, no, 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 no. I didn't mean it. To, I didn't mean it like that. It's something that I'll, I will really miss, not having Dave Jones to my left. And we'll, we'll all miss his columns and, and everything that, that he yeah. brought, the post-game videos, everything. Yeah. But the sheer sometimes annoyance, sometimes bemusement on his face. Mostly just, annoyance, yeah. Mostly annoyance. When I'm looking at him and just, like, singing the latest, like, little Yachty song, and, and he's like, what what the hell is this? No, he's uh, not saying, what the hell is this? Dave, Dave – the last couple of years on the beat, he said whatever he wanted to say in the press box. So it wasn't what the hell. Yeah, no, it definitely wasn't. Uh, something I will certainly miss. Uh, you will be on the receiving end of that uh, for mm-hmm. the years to come. I look forward to it. Uh, it's educational because yeah. I learn more about music from you just singing. And it, again, you're not, you're not, you know, you're, you're just kind of under, under your breast singing a little bit or not, you know, there's, it's a pretty crowded press box but i just uh I, unless it was led zeppelin i think dave was offended by every music choice that ever played at beaver stadium uh you know in, during a penn state football game over the last 10 to 15 years and i think part of it he think he, he thought he was being funny but i think deep down he actually really meant it i re- he definitely definitely did um led zeppelin my favorite band so whenever i was singing led zeppelin at him i think that's the only time that he was okay with it. Uh, no, you mentioned Bruce Springsteen. I'm honestly, I'm not a big Bruce guy, and I know yeah, that. But I think for the experience, you might want to go. For the experience, I might go. Dale, Taylor Swift, I would yeah. be, I'd be first in line. Uh, How about Dua Lipa? I would be, I would be camping out. I would be Nittany Villing it for Dua Lipa. Uh, I, I went and saw her out in Columbus, Ohio. Uh-huh. Uh, I guess it was three years ago. I was living in Pittsburgh. Me and a group of my friends went out and uh, drove what, whatever it was, the two, three hours out to Columbus. And she puts on a great show. I've been to Taylor Swift a couple of times. Uh, I know that she's kind of a polarizing figure uh, for many, but she puts on a good concert. And, and and you know that those those shows would sell out in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. All right, Johnny, there was a little bit of a Penn State football correlation there, uh, but we're going to move on. Let's talk about two things. Um, I think the more important thing is the draft. I also wanted to get some your thoughts on Keandre Lambert-Smith. Number one, he found a home. And also – the transfer portal, it's, what is it, today, May 1st? It's pretty much the door is shut, right, on the on the portal. And yeah, just- so, so, so the door is shut to new entrance. Uh, it was April 30th, so yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, for undergrads, May 1st for grad transfers. 
but there's like a 48 hour window that basically if you entered your name, uh, you know, say you're an undergrad, say you're a sophomore on Penn State's team and you, and you want to leave and you enter your name on Tuesday, April 30th, there's like a 48 hour window that the school has to approve that and basically, you know, go through their process of, of you know, you leaving and everything. Uh, so you might still see names pop up here today, Wednesday, May 1st, and even Thursday, May 2nd. But it's, yeah. it's for all intents and purposes, it's 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 over. Yeah, I got you. Well, oh, OK, so we'll get to Keandre, but let's talk about the draft. Um, uh, in the end, Penn State had eight guys picked a couple of people uh, who we who I thought I think who you thought would get picked did not. A couple of players, I think, found some some free agent homes. But, but, but I think most of the fans by now know who who got picked, who went where. So I guess what what I would do with you is. Um, maybe your biggest reaction to uh, a new story involving a Penn State player, either where they went, what the fit was, or early, late, middle, where they thought. What what, what stood out to you from three days of the draft? You know, I, honestly, I think and it might just fly under the radar a little bit because he's not the – he wasn't the first-round tackle. Uh, but Caden Wallace yeah. going 68 overall uh, to the New England Patriots – you know, from a from a neutral standpoint, from a like you know NFL draft evaluator standpoint, maybe a bit of a reach. Um, you know, given you know, I guess where Caden stacked up on the consensus board and everything, but a, a phenomenal moment for him, uh, and really credit to him for you know his past season, uh, his last season at Penn State, his best season uh, at Penn State, putting it all together. I think he allowed one sack on like 359 pass blocking uh, snaps. Uh, and, and was really just super solid for Penn State in 2023, and uh, it was really cool to see that. Obviously, the, you know the first round picks and uh, and Olu Fashnu going, you know, number 11 overall to the Jets after they traded back. Um, you know, and I think the Jets can use some blocking, and they're kind of in win now mode with Aaron Rodgers uh, and having someone like Olu on on your mm-hmm. left side. Uh, that's it's a hell of an asset to have. Uh, and then shop going 21 overall, my, uh, you, know, to, you know, to the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. My, my prediction, my bold prediction last week of him, you know, I started, you know, bold prediction inside the top 18. I moved it up even to 15. Uh, so that doesn't come true. But shop does, you know, not only hear his name go in the first round, but going 21 overall is is pretty damn good for him. Yeah, I have a couple, Mike, I have a couple of thoughts. I, ha- I have to say it. I mean, there were, there was, I was really happy to see some guys and where they landed, but. Kalen King going in the seventh round, Johnny. I know he went to a, a program that uh, has an eye for talent and late round picks, Penn State late round picks like Rasheed Walker have really turned it around in that environment. But Rasheed Walker was hurt, right? That's that's kind of why he went in the seventh round. He was banged up. And I think I think they knew that he would probably wasn't going to play that first year and it would be a, almost like a redshirt year. I have to say it, uh, Kalen King, uh, you know, I know I saw, I saw, I think I saw on social media, he celebrated, but I think he should have came back. Uh, he did not have the year that he wanted. Um, and um, I know that he was so good in 2022, but to go in the seventh round when you still had some eligibility left to opt out of the bowl game, kind of, I think at the last minute, um, I think if he had a redo, Johnny, I think, I think he might do that. I know he probably had some people, in his ear, but that, that to me, if, if we're going to talk about the one thing that's, that's going to stay with me, um, it's going to be him going in round seven after what we thought of him going into 2023. And the other thing is not to keep it negative, but I, I was very happy uh, for Adisa Isaac, for his fit, for how far he's come since the start of the 2022 season. And also Hunter Norzad, uh, a versatile player who, that the Chiefs know what they're doing in the draft. Um, he's, he went to a great organization. They're going to be in contention for as long as, as long as Mahomes is upright. He, they've shown that they're going to, they're going to figure it out. Just very happy for those two guys um, and their fits. Adisa to the Ravens uh, world reunite with one of his old teammates. Odaf, I think it's Odafe, Odafe Owe. Um, th- that's a team that's going to be around too. Those are kind of the things that jump out to me. I know some people are like, well, Johnny Dixon didn't get drafted either. I, I think Johnny was hurt. Johnny Dixon was hurt. And I think that definitely, it was a, it, I think it was a hip injury or something lower body. And those yeah. things, you know, 
it, it doesn't take much to scare a team off. I think if Johnny Dixon was healthy, I think he would have been a mid-round pick. Um, but it is what it is. But those are kind of my thoughts on the draft. I know you have some, some thoughts on what I mentioned and maybe some other players as well. Yeah, with the corners, you mentioned Johnny Dixon there. Yeah, he, he picked up what was described at the time as a glute injury at the senior bowl and had to leave early. Uh, and then I, I, he might've said it was a hip flexor. I, yeah. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was an injury that, that nagged him throughout uh, the pre-draft process, wasn't able to work out at the NFL combine or at pro day. So, I mean, that when, when you're already kind of a, a day three guy, um, you know, whether it's fourth, fifth, sixth round, whatever, uh, when you're already in that conversation and then you can't work out really at all during the pre-draft process, and I think you yeah. would have tested well at the combine. Uh, yeah, that, that's it's just a really unfortunate deal for you. Uh, Curtis Jacobs, surprised he didn't get picked. Um, but you know, I think a really good landing spot with the Chiefs. You talk about you know Mahomes and everything else. You know, with that with that franchise, what they've uh, what they've done. Yeah. You know, Curtis Jacobs. It's it's one of those situations where uh, you talk to a lot of guys even after their playing career, or you know whether they're four or five years into the NFL, guys who went in the sixth, seventh round or undrafted. And a lot of them will tell you at that point, yeah, you want to hear your name called and, and that's a cool moment. But yeah, to have the flexibility to pick which team you really want to go to, because those guys, I mean, it's, I mean, it was immediate right after the draft. I mean, they're talking to teams during the sixth, seventh round mm -hmm. uh, about like, Hey, we're not going to pick you, but uh, you know, we're ringing your phone off the hook to, to try to sign you as an undrafted free agent. So yeah. I think it's a good, honestly, a good landing spot for Curtis on draft weekend, even though he didn't get drafted. Uh, yeah. Kalen, Kalen, yeah, I, like I agree with you, um, you know, the, 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 on the decision to leave. And I, it's just really tough when you have a great 2022 season and you just frankly don't in 2023. And you have that tape against Marvin Harrison Jr. that carries with you throughout the entire process. Uh, you don't, he didn't perform well at the combine. I think he ran a 4 6 one forty. He Second slowest. Yeah, second slowest among corners uh, in Indianapolis uh, that week, and he improved his time a little bit at pro day. But uh, you know, it, it just wasn't it just wasn't a good year for Kalen King. And I hope that that he's able to uh, do what you know Rasheed Walker and, and what's you know, a lot of seventh round picks do, who are talented and uh, just kind of fall off. That 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 he turns it around, and um, and and I think he's in a good situation there. But um, yeah, and, and yeah, on Adisa. Uh, I, I was, you know, he could have gone in the second round. I thought, I, you know, the, the production's yeah. there, the talent's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but to land with the Ravens, I think is a really good fit for him too. So I think overall it was a really good, I think it was a good draft weekend for, for Penn state. You know, we, we saw Daquan Hardy get picked. Um, and that was going to be my bold prediction, Bob, uh, before I ended up pivoting to an older prediction. My bold prediction, we talked about it pre-show last week, was that you know yeah. Daquan Hardy was going to be the first of the three Penn State corners to get picked, and he was, uh, to the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. But I think overall a good draft weekend for, for Penn yeah. State. Even though you have Kalen that falls and Curtis doesn't get picked, I think you know having two first-round picks, you know, the only the second time that's happened in James Franklin's tenure – uh, you know, to have two first rounders um, and, and to have a couple of guys on day two, Theo Johnson landing with the Giants. I thought they good got a, fit. Steal. I, a good fit. I think they got a steal with him, uh, you know, in, in the fourth round. So, yeah, overall, I think pretty solid. Having nine, right. eight guys drafted. Yep. All yeah. right. Here's the first wild card moment for you, Johnny. I'll sure. filibuster. I'll James, I'll James Franklin filibuster a little bit for you, but um, – 2025 draft. You've already written about it. Way too early. Look, it's gonna be it's gonna be rich with Penn State players. There's a lot of third year the players, third year players this year that are blue chip players. That if they if they ascend or are productive, uh, they're gone goodbye. They they just are and and deservedly so. Um, it's it's gonna be a large class. I think it really has a chance to be large. I I was I thought for sure it'd be more than eight this year. I think it'll be more than eight next year, but who, if you had to bet Johnny McGonigal of the of the twenty twenty four team, who will be the first Nittany Lion picked in the twenty twenty five draft? I think the safest answer is Abdul Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've seen his ability to disrupt the backfield, uh, get to the quarterback as a linebacker, and we know how explosive he is. We know the power, the size, the speed everything that he has translates to defensive end. And I think NFL teams are really going to see that and they're going to love it. And mm -hmm. assuming he doesn't get hurt, 
and assuming he plays up to his potential, which I think he will, uh, you know, being coached up by Dion Barnes, getting the yep. technique and every all the little details down between now and the season opener, uh, I think he is pretty much a, it, it, you don't want to call anything a sure thing because we're sitting here mm-hmm. 11 months and change uh, from mm-hmm. the 2025 mm-hmm. NFL draft. And, you know, it was only last August that everyone thought Kalen King was, you know, the, the number one corner yep. and top 10 pick, yep. top 15 pick. So a lot of things can change. But my, my pick there would be Abdul Carter. And just to extend on that, though, there's a real chance. And again, we're sitting here 11 months and change away from the 2025 NFL draft. There's a real chance that Penn State could have like four guys picked in the first round. Uh, you look at Abdul Carter, <clears throat> you look at his counterpart at Denied Dennis Sutton. You talk about what guy, you know, what the NFL wants in a defensive end. I mean, he's a just a massive human being and has all the potential mm-hmm. in the world. KJ Winston was one of the best safeties in the country last year. And then Drew Aller, I think, is kind of a you know, a lightning rod for conversation, if you will. But we just saw six quarterbacks go in the top 12 picks. Uh, and if Drew Aller is able to unlock what he can do uh, in Andy Kotelnicki's offense, I think you're looking at a potential first round pick. Yeah, my my, I think I think deny Dennis Sutton is my first line. I love what you said about Abdul. He's got to be smarter off the field, Johnny. This uh, this latest. Oh, yeah. um, that's two thi- That's two. That's two things. Uh, I, the most the, the more recent one. It's alleged altercation with a tow truck driver, actually before the blue white game, and they still played him. Uh, the guy was left with some uh, injuries. There was a, a, an assault charge, I think, filed. He's got to go to court. Um, those things add up. I would say I'm with you on just about everything, but you know that that is that w- that's going to raise some that's going to raise some red flags with him, and he's going to have to have a really really good year. Number one, um, but his talent is absolutely first round uh, level. But he's going to have to. He's going to have to interview well, and he's going to have to have a clean slate, I would say, between now and uh, and next April. And that's – I mean, he could still come out, right? He could still come out. But, I mean, if you want to be a premium pick in the first round, you just got to – alleged or not alleged, what, you know, all that stuff. Um, you know, the, the NFL keeps score on stuff like that. And I really hope that, you know – you know, we don't know the whole story with the, the, the latest alleged incident. But it's just it's, – it's a bit of a concern. Deny Dennis Sutton, I think – now that he's got a free runway to more snaps, now that he's look now that he looks the way that he does, he has the experience that he has. He's got a running mate off the other side to take pressure off him and Abdul. I could see him in a premium position being the first line picked. I could see him going in round one. I'm not so sure that the best player going into 2024 on the Penn State t- team isn't Kevin Winston. I think you're right, but that's not a premium position. But he he might be the most the most, uh, you know, coveted player, but teams are very reluctant, I think, to spend first round picks on safeties. But when you're 6'2", 210, and you can play the pass or the run and never come off the field, um, they're, they're, you know, their safeties do go in the first round. I'm with you on on kind of all of that. Really intrigued about the running backs this year and how they can do it. And, and also Drew, he's already landing in first round mocks. I would pump the brakes on that. I mean, I know the talent's great, but it's yeah. there's there's still going to have to be some consistency and some he's he's some some players are going to have to show up for him. Yes. I love the OC, but yeah, I think there'll be more than eight. I could see double digits. You can make a case. Some people will break out. We haven't mentioned some positions, so yeah, it should be really fun, uh, Johnny, next year. But I would also say this one more wild card uh, question for you here on the sure. Blue Wave breakdown before we get to. Keandre Lambert Smith's new home is <clears throat> I saw I think it was on it was on Tuesday. I saw somebody on Twitter had how he would rank early look at the rankings of the Big Ten teams in the standings. And I'm not gonna ask you to do that, but you know, I'm, and not necessarily on the schedule they play, but just overall in the Big Ten. How many how many teams would you put above? I know it's it's I know it's May 1st. How many teams would you definitely put above? Penn State at this point? I know there's two, but where do you see Penn State right now in your mind, um, maybe best case in the Big Ten? Yeah, I mean, the one of them is absolutely Ohio State. And then you kind of have to put Michigan there. But they're, I mean, they're losing so much. Not only their, their first-round quarterback, everything. Like, they're losing a lot of guys. They had a lot of guys picked in this draft. 
Uh, but you know, they've won the last two Big Ten titles, and you would I think you just slot them ahead of Penn State given the recent success against the Nittany Lions. A- outside of that, I mean, you talk about you know losing quarterbacks and lo- I mean Washington lost you know their entire offense really from from the the, the team that made it to the national yeah. title game from Michael Penix, Roma Dunze, McMillan, Polk, uh, even you know on the offensive line. USC loses Caleb Williams. Like I, I would put Penn State third. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe, you know, Oregon is in the mix there, I guess. But I, I don't know what, who, where were they at in, in this in this ranking that you saw? I think they were third. I think they, they were, were third. Yeah. yeah I, was, I, was I, third. I just think they have so much talent coming back, and we talked about the number of the number of guys who are, who are projected to go in this 2025 NFL yeah. draft. Look at the 2022 recruiting class, and yeah, man, that has really panned out and. Uh, you know, how highly productive and highly touted it was. And and it's really paying dividends because we mentioned, you know, Carter, Denai Dennis Sutton, you know, Aller, the running backs and Singleton and Katron. Um, I mean, even Drew Shelton at left tackle. Uh, yep. Winston, like there are so many guys in this 2022 class that uh, it's kind of a now or never situation because there are going to be a lot of guys go to the NFL. Uh, one guy who wasn't in that 2022 class that we, that we haven't talked about, uh, Tyler Warren, the tight end, who probably could have left and been the third tight end off the board this draft, uh, looks sure. to be looks to be one of the top guys at his position. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just think they bring back so much talent. Obviously, there are huge question marks. We know what they are uh, in receiver and a new offense and uh, new defensive coordinator, everything that goes along with that. But um, I don't know. I, I would put them three, probably. Yeah. Uh, I, until I see that passing game, man, I'm not doing it. I, I, I know they play some – I'm a little curious. I know. I know they didn't have a good year. I'm a little curious to see what Wisconsin does this year. Penn State Dang. plays them. Minnesota, not quite there. Um, I hate to say it. They got to go to USC, and I know USC does not believe in playing defense, even though they they Lincoln Riley apparently was in just just watch defense during the spring. I'm not buying that either. I just there are just so many games I think this year that Penn State will either be slightly favored or they're going to be on the road and that's going to balance some things out that if their offense can't score more than 20 points, they could be in trouble, including week one, Johnny. I saw an early line they put on Twitter, uh, Penn state minus 12 and a half at Morgantown. How are you feeling about that? My man? God. Yeah. I, I haven't dove into, in, into that quite enough to, to give any kind of early. West Virginia has, has that quarterback, two running backs there. They, yeah. I mean, they, and it's an environment play too, right? It is, yeah. I mean, it's an environment play. It's week one. It's a new offense. Um, it, you know, my gut would say to take the points, uh, but I, I think Penn State wins that game still. Like, here's the thing with Penn State's schedule. Like, I, I think it's more tricky than it is challenging, if that makes sense. Like, there are, there are, you know, you have to go out to USC, like, you know, first in season trip out to to the West Coast. Uh, for the you know the new Big Ten coming in and everything for Penn State, so logistically it could be uh, an issue. You know, like th- these little tricky things throughout the schedule. But I just I just look across the board and the teams that are coming into the Big Ten, and uh, I really think the only team talent wise that is a- as talented is I mean probably Ohio State, given how much that Michigan lost. But I- I'm not going to discount the Wolverines, so that's why I say Penn State yep. is probably fair being at number three. Uh, but it it is a tricky schedule, and like the West Virginia right. could very well be tricky. Um, you know they're going to be juiced up down there for the, for this game. I mean it, it's their game of the season. Looking at West Virginia's schedule yeah. the rest of the year, this is their game of the season in week one, uh, and it's probably the fifth biggest game for Penn State when you look at their schedule. Uh, maybe fourth biggest, but um, yeah, like going to Wisconsin, like that's going to be difficult. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's tough to say sitting here right now on May first, but. Uh, cause you know, yeah, that's why game. I did it to you. I, yeah. That's why, that's why you did it to me. I did it to you. You just put me in a tough place, but that's yeah, why I like to put you, I let you put, I'll put you in like a bit of a bind and see how you wriggle out of it. You did it. Yeah. There we go. How's this for a transition? <laughs> Another reason why the West Virginia game is going to be tough is Penn state doesn't have Keandre Lambert Smith this year to save him, like yeah. he did last year. Yeah. I mean, Keandre, yeah, he made the big play in the West Virginia game. I was joking on that. Last I know. Year. I know you were, I know you were. And I mean, he did save him against Indiana. Yeah, uh, but you know it. Yeah, it, it, Keandre Lambert Smith, who entered the portal a couple of weeks ago, left the team before the blue white game. Uh, the transition being Bob that he has found a new home. Uh, he's at Auburn. Uh, I believe their quarterback is still Peyton Thorn uh, from Michigan State fame. 
I, I don't know if that's much of a better situation for Keandre outside of uh, maybe a, a boost in the old NIL would be my guess. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and I saw <clears throat> some quotes from him. I guess he got introduced uh, to the Auburn media uh, group down there. And, and he was talking about, you know, Cam Coleman is a really good promising receiver that Auburn has. And, uh, and Keandre was talking about being a leader and, and teaching him things. And I, I don't know if I would want Keandre Lambert Smith as the leader of my wide receiver room. And, and again, like, you know, he has made some big plays. So I don't want to discount him as a yeah. completely discount him as a player. But uh, if, if you flip on the tape or you watch, you know, you, you go back and watch some games and see how many, times he gave up on routes last year for this uh, Penn State team. Uh, I don't necessarily, unless he completely changes his tune and really takes this as a fresh start, a new chapter. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think you want Keandre being your number one receiver in terms of a, a leadership role. Is it Hugh Freeze? Is he the coach down there now? Who's the coach at Auburn? Yeah. Yes, you freeze. I just know this. When I think of SEC and elite passing games, Auburn's like at the bottom of the list. And I just, you know, you mentioned NIL money, and I get that. But he also needed to find, stay a little face and land somewhere. But, I mean, if you want to if you want to put out some tape or be featured in an offense, I just, you know, is, is, Auburn, is it the Auburn offense? Is that is – that, I know Penn State had its issues in the passing game. But, I, I mean, I just – I think his options were pretty – probably a little bit more limited than, than we realized. And I think he did need a fresh start. I just don't know when you're in your fifth year. And the first four years was all boom or bust. You were either you were either one of the best offensive players on the field in the game, or you disappeared. I don't know. I don't know if you can uh, pull a one eighty on that. And I'll be curious to see because it's like you said, Johnny. It wasn't just the lack of splash plays in in some in some big games. It was also, you know, there were plays where it, if he knew he wasn't getting the ball. Everyone else knew he wasn't getting the ball either, and that really bothered me. Like, you could see it. He wouldn't try. I mean, defense is new, and he need, he needs to be better. He needs to be a better teammate. Yeah, uh, Bob, on, on the Auburn passing offense front, uh, they – yeah, it, it was it was pretty bad last year. They actually well, the 2022 it, game. That was even worse. I know it's a different coach, but, man, we were down there going, boy, P- Penn State is going to well, – I, I picked Auburn. And I, I, I saw him try and throw the ball, and it looked like they were a Division three team. They ranked 124th nationally last year in, in passing yards per game. For reference, uh, Penn State ranked 79th. Uh, in completions of 20 yards or more, uh, Penn State was 109th. Auburn was 105th. Uh, so it's a really big jump, you know, going to a high-profile offense like that. And, and <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I don't really get it from a, uh, you know, let me go show my skills standpoint. But, you know, if you're Keandre Lambert-Smith and, you know, in terms of the NFL, if that's uh, something you're realizing probably isn't going to be a viable long-term option uh, and, and the NIL money was pretty good, yeah. you know, because cause you know that, that that money flows in the SEC. Uh, it does. And he had, he had uh, visits, you know, obviously he ends up at Auburn. He had a visit to Texas A&M as well, which – is it has been known at least in recent years to like buy their teams basically from yeah. you know the portal and recruiting. Uh, so if that's all what it was, then then you know good good for Keandre Lambert Smith. Uh, from a explosive passing game situation, uh, I I don't get it. <laughs> I don't Johnny, get it. We, we got through another one. I put you on the spot a couple of times. You passed with flying colors. Uh, I know you survived. Not the Luke McCombs concert, the Luke Combs experience, Luke McCombs. And, and you will, uh, you'll. I'm sure you, the next chance you get it, you get to go to maybe one of his shows. You'll go, but yeah, I we we both survived the draft, which is probably significant because of they 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 sure they cram a lot of stuff in 60 hours or whatever it is, and it's it's. I have a lot of respect for guys like Dane Brugler who wrote who who wrote profiles on like 600 people, and they had the energy to kind of be ready to talk about anyone on a radio show or with a college football beat writer. I really, cause man, after, after three days, I, I mean, I, I was only really two days. We pre-wrote some stuff on Saturday, but um, you know, after two days, I was like, boy, I, I, uh, it's a lot. It's, 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 a, it's lot. a lot. So I'm glad we both were able to survive it. You know, it's funny, Bob, you know, it's funny real quick, quick, mm-hmm. quick story before we, yeah. we go out. So, uh, you know, Friday night, uh, you know, after the, the normal work day, the, the nine to five for, for normal people, unlike us, 
uh, you know, we're driving up to State College. It's me and, and some family members. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I'm not driving because the, the draft started at seven. We didn't leave till six. And you know, just so I could hop on my computer on my hotspot and, and post from the draft if anyone got picked yeah. in that line for Penn State. Uh, yeah. And they didn't in the second round. And uh, but I told I told my brother, I'm like, you know, as soon as we get up to the house, because we have extended family in, in State College. Yeah. Like as soon as we get up to the house, as soon as I walk in the door. Penn State is going to have a player picked. I'm going to have to hop on my computer before I'm even able to, to crack a beer. And sure as hell, as soon as I walk through the door, Caden Wallace, number 68 overall uh, to the New England Patriots. So, yes. you know, thankfully, though, you mentioned some pre-writes. We, uh, we did some work ahead of time before the draft to make our lives a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was overall a successful draft, uh, I think, for Penn State, Bob. Uh, we got through it, uh, and it was a, it was a successful yeah. weekend. Uh, Luke Combs, hell of a show. Yeah would, yeah, would highly recommend. Yeah, yeah. I think it's much better to watch the uh, draft as a fan, maybe in a bar, rather than kind of covering the draft, even though we weren't there. But yeah, uh, it's in it's in the uh, rear room mirror. We're going to be busy again next year in 2025. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not even sure where it is, but it looked like Detroit showed out for it. And I think the NFL is on to something by letting some other sites, even though if they're not, you know, standard – just give everyone a chance with the draft. And I, I just think the fan bases will come out. It was a lot of fun. And Johnny, good talking with you. And we'll be back next week to talk some more Penn State football, maybe some of your concert experiences. There might even be some recruiting news. We'll see.